Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the cardiovascular system. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, asymmetric dimethyl arginine, or ADMA for short, asymmetric dimethyl arginine. And I'll just write out its full name underneath. So this is asymmetric, uh, and we'll see why it's called asymmetric in a moment. Uh, dimethyl, dimethyl arginine. Okay, and basically, this compound is an endogenous inhibitor of uh, nitric oxide synthase enzymes, and it will inhibit all free nitric oxide synthase enzymes. And its um, ability to do so is uh, about equal to that of LNMMA or uh, NG monomethyl L-arginine. Okay, so what I want to show you is I want to show you the structure of asymmetric dimethyl arginine. Then what I want to do is discuss a potential feedback mechanism by which nitric oxide leads to uh, it, it, its own inhibition of the enzyme that produced it, basically, i.e. how if you make a lot of nitric oxide via uh, NOS enzymes, how that's going to lead to the inactivation of the NOS enzymes, i.e. a negative feedback loop, uh, well, a potential negative feedback loop involving asymmetric dimethyl arginine. Okay, so let's begin with its structure. So let's start off with the typical amino acid structure. So here's the alpha carbon with the carboxylic acid group coming off here. Then you have the amino group coming also off the alpha carbon, which we'll draw here. A hydrogen coming off the alpha carbon. And now let's complete the structure. So here's the R group of uh, asymmetric dimethyl arginine. And it's very similar to, similar to arginine, obviously, because it's um, going to inhibit the nitric oxide synthase. So it needs to be an analog of um, arginine, the substrate for the nitric oxide synthase enzymes. And here's a nitrogen with a hydrogen coming off it. And then next along, you have a carbon. And then you have these two guanidino nitrogens, which at the moment I'm drawing this one here with the double bond to the carbon. But uh, remember, we discussed how uh, the uh, two nitrogens here, for there is another one here, uh, they have a resonant structure. So the double bond will flip between being uh, between this carbon and this nitrogen and being between this carbon and this nitrogen. Okay, and then off this amino group, you then have two methyl groups like this. Okay, now that's why it's called asymmetric dimethyl arginine. Dimethyl arginine, because you've stuck two methyl groups onto this uh, amino group at the end of the arginine, and asymmetric, because you've put both of them onto one nitrogen. If it was going to be symmetric dimethyl arginine, what you'd have is one methyl on this nitrogen, and then another methyl on this nitrogen. So remember, these two nitrogens are effectively equivalent. These, well, even though I've drawn it with one having a single bond and one having a double bond, they're effectively equivalent because this, you can think about them almost having one and a half bonds, and in some uh, people's drawings of arginine, they will show it with one and a half bonds, which they show like, um, they'll put uh, one bond like that, and then they'll put the other one in sort of dashed lines like that, so they'd have a structure that looks like this, here's the carbon, and here are the two nitrogens coming off here, okay, and that's to demonstrate that this, this is a resonant structure. The double bond is splitting between the two. Okay, right. So, uh, looking at this structure, it becomes clear to us why uh, this is going to be a potent blocker of nitric oxide synthases, because it's uh, basically got a very analogous structure to L-arginine, uh, which is uh, the substrate for our nitric oxide synthase enzymes, and indeed it is a potent inhibitor of all three uh, nitric oxide synthase enzymes. So NOS1, NOS2, and NOS3 will inhibit all three of them. Okay, and ADMA is uh, of a lot of interest to people studying cardiovascular disease because um, overproduction of ADMA is going to inhibit the nitric oxide synthases, and that's going to mean that the nitric oxide synthases in the endothelium, which is specifically NOS3 or ENOS, for endothelial NOS are going to stop producing nitric oxide. And if they stop producing nitric oxide, we've seen that that's going to produce 
over-contraction of the uh, smooth muscle lining the blood vessel, which might lead to permanent narrowing of that blood vessel, which could be the basis of hypertension. Okay, so uh, now let's have a look at this uh, negative feedback um, loop that I told you about. So, we know that endothelial cells in the cardiovascular system produce nitric oxide. Okay, so if we have an endothelial cell here, let's say, so this is an endothelial cell, it has nitric oxide synthase enzymes in. So let's draw the nitric oxide synthase enzyme here. Okay, and the main type of nitric oxide synthase enzyme that is in endothelial cells is NOS free or ENOS. So NOS free slash ENOS. Okay, right, so this is producing nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide break, uh, sorry, inhibits the enzyme which breaks down ADMA. So nitric oxide is going to inhibit the enzyme that breaks down uh, ADMA. Okay, so it's going to come over here and inhibit the enzyme, well, it's going to inhibit the enzyme which is also in the endothelial cells, which breaks down uh, ADMA. And this enzyme is an enzyme known as dimethyl arginine, dimethyl amino hydrolase. So this is dimethyl arginine, referring to the uh, compound that it's going to act on, dimethyl arginine, okay, uh, dimethyl amino hydrolase dimethyl amino hydrolase. Okay, whoops, this isn't going to fit on. So that should all be one word, dimethyl amino hydrolase. Right, and now because that's a bit of a mouthful, people often abbreviate this, enzy uh, this enzyme's name to D for dimethyl arginine, D for dimethyl here, A for amino, and then H for hydrolase. So DDAH uh, means uh, dimethyl arginine, dimethyl amino hydrolase. Okay, so I want to show you the reaction that in these endothelial cells, this A, uh, DDAH is catalyzing. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to take in the molecule of a asymmetric dimethyl arginine, and it's also going to combine this with a water molecule. So in comes a water molecule. Okay, uh, right, and what it's going to do is it's going to break down this asymmetric dimethyl arginine into an L-citrulline molecule. So let me draw out L-citrulline and then we'll try and understand what has changed and what else needs to be produced from this reaction. Okay, so L-citrulline is another amino acid, so let's start by drawing the basic amino acid structure here. So here's the amino group, here's the carboxylic acid group down here. Okay, then again you have these three methylene groups coming off here. One methylene, two, and then the third one here. And then off that third methylene you then have a nitrogen with a hydrogen like so, and then a carbon, double bo well, single bonded to an amino group which I'll draw up here and then double bonded to an oxygen down here. So this is the structure of L-citrulline. Okay, so effectively what you have done to, to make L-citrulline from uh, asymmetric dimethyl arginine is you break off this bond here. So we're going to break off that bond there, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're also going to put in this water molecule here. So let me draw out the structure of water here. Okay, we're going to break up water as well. So we're going to break these two bonds of water here to effectively get two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. What we're going to do is bind one of those hydrogen atoms to this missing bond that we've broken between the nitrogen and the carbon. That will give us um, dimethylamine here. Okay, so an amine, uh, uh, effectively an ammonia group, uh, but with um, two um, methyl groups off it there. So this is dimethylamine. 
Okay, so that's one of the byproducts. Now we've got an oxygen atom, a hydrogen atom, and this carbon double bonded to this nitrogen and to the hydrogen. Well, what we're going to do is break one of the bonds of that double bond there. Okay, so now this nitrogen will have a spare bond. We're going to bind that spare bond to the hydrogen atom, one, the other hydrogen atom from the um, water, and that's going to create us this amino group of this carbon. And now we've broken two bonds with this carbon now, so this carbon needs to form two more bonds, and now it forms those two bonds with this oxygen atom to create us this L-citrulline. Okay, so in the endothelial cell, this enzyme, dimethylarginine dimethylaminohydrolase, is breaking down asymmetric dimethylarginine into L-citrulline and also dimethylamine. So, uh, if you break this molecule down, it can no longer inhibit the ENOS. Right, so what's going to happen is when the endothelial cell is producing a lot of nitric oxide, i.e. the ENOS is very active, you're going to produce a lot of nitric oxide. The nitric oxide will then inhibit this dimethylarginine dimethylaminohydrolase enzyme, and then it will stop breaking down the ADMA. So it'll stop breaking down the asymmetric dimethylarginine here. That means dimethyl asymmetric dimethylarginine will build up in the cytoplasm of that endothelial cell, and then it will inhibit this NOS3. So this functions effectively as a negative feedback loop. When you've produced a lot of nitric oxide, it then inactivates the uh, DDAH enzyme, the dimethylarginine dimethylaminohydrolase. Uh, that causes a rise in... Um, ADMA, asymmetric dimethylarginine level in the cytoplasm of the endothelial cell, which then stops the production of more nitric oxide. So this effectively is a, a negative feedback loop. Okay, to stop you producing too much nitric oxide. Loop. Okay, and uh, the function of this dimethylarginine dimethylaminohydrolase and this asymmetric dimethylarginine is an area of a lot of study in cardiovascular uh, disease uh, because potentially uh, dysfunction of this enzyme could then lead to too much ADMA in the uh, cytoplasm of the endothelial cells, which inhibits the ENOS too much and therefore produces you too little nitric oxide, producing uh, permanently overconstricted blood vessels.